In this video, we will be learning about articulation point. Now, what is articulation point? So, an articulation point is a node on whose removal the graph is broken down into two or more number of components. Now, in the previous video, we have already discussed how to find bridges in a graph. Over there, we did use the concept of time in and the low time. So, we will also be using the same concept over here. But before that, let's understand what is articulation point. So, can I say, if I remove this one, if I remove this one entirely, am I breaking the graph into two or more components? The answer to that is no. So, this is definitely not an articulation point. But if I remove this four, just imagine if I remove this four, am I breaking the graph into two or more components? The answer to that is yes. If I remove four, I break it down into two or more components. Again, if I remove eight, am I breaking it into two or more components? Yes. The answer is yes. Again, if I remove the six, am I breaking this into two or more components? The answer is yes. If I remove this five, am I breaking it into two or more components? Yes. Again, if I'm removing this 11, am I breaking this into two or more components? No. So I can definitely say that something like 4, 5, 6, 8, 10, these guys are articulation points because on their removal, the graph is broken down into two or more components. So how do you find out the articulation point in a graph? Now, if you know the concept of time insertion and lower time, we can do that. So in our previous video, we did learn about time insertion and lowest when I was discussing finding the bridges in a graph. So if you haven't seen that video, I will highly recommend that you watch that video and after that you can watch this video. So in order to find articulation point, we are going to use a pretty different formula to the one that we used while finding the bridges. The formula will be something like this. If low of the adjacent is greater than or equal to yes, time of insertion of the current node, that's one of the conditions. While the other condition is the parent should not be equal to minus one. I'm going to uh, explain you both of these conditions while I do the DFS and write the time insertions. But as of now, just remember that these conditions will be used. I'm going to tell you the intuition while we dry run the algorithm on the graph. At that moment, I will be telling you the intuition. Okay, so let's start. So I know for this, the time of insertion and the lower time will be one. For this, the time of insertion and the lower time will be two. For this, the time of insertion and the lower time will be three. For this four and four, for this five and five. So let's quickly write it. For this six and six, for this seven and seven, for this eight and eight, for this uh, nine and nine, for this uh, 10 and 10, I'm just doing a simple DFS traversal, nothing else. I'm just simply doing a DFS traversal. For this 11 and 11. So when I do a DFS traversal, this 12 finds out that this 10 is already visited. Yes, this 12 finds out that this 10 is already visited. So what it does is it takes it takes its time of insertion and replaces its lowest time of insertion to 9. Now, I'm very much sure that this 12 can never be articulation point. Why? Because a 10 can be reached and that's why I can definitely say that this guy or this guy cannot be an articulation point. So what I do is I come back to 11. Why? Because for 12, yes, because for 12, the DFS is complete and I come back to 11. Now, this is a very crucial step. At 11, the first stage is just update the lowest possible insertion time because now it is this 9 that you take on. Currently, you compare that you are at 11, right? So the time of insertion is 10 and the lowest, yes, and the lowest time is 9. Now, let's understand this. Now, what I'm saying is if I'm removing 11, if I remove this 11, if I just remove this 11, just hypothetically think that this 11 is not there then can I reach anything before 11? And I can say that 12 can reach something before 11. That's why the lowest time is 9. 
So 12 can reach something before 11, not 11, something before 11. So it can reach and how do I know that it can reach? Because it is having a lowest insertion time as 9. So I'm very much sure that 12 can reach something before 11, which means even if I'm removing this 11, the graph hasn't been broken down into different components, right? That's why it's very important that this is greater than or equal to because it's very important you reach something before that, not exactly on 11. You should not be exactly reaching 11. You should be reaching something before this 11. That is very, very important. If you did not understand this uh, greater than or equal to concept, you will as we move forward. But this parent minus one, I'll explain as we go on. Now this 11 cannot be articulation point. So what we do is, we simply uh, go to this 10. Yes, we simply go to this 10. And we see that it is having 9. And this guy is also having 9. Now we are currently at 10. And we can say that for 11 and 12, the adjacent nodes have been visited. So the current node is currently 10. And the time of insertion for that is 9. And the adjacent node that is 11, the lowest time for that is 9. Now I see that it is greater than or equal to what it means is this 11 cannot reach anything before 10 that's why it's greater than or equal to it is 9 which means it can take a different path and reach 10 itself not before 10 now since it cannot reach before 10 i can definitely say that this is an articulation point so i can say 10 is one of my possible articulation points. Again, it's very, very critical that this greater than equal to is there, not only greater than, because it's very important that you should reach before 10, not on 10, because over here, 10 is removed. So even if you're reaching 10, doesn't matter. You should be reaching the other, other end of 10, so that this cannot be an articulation point, right? So if you're reaching 10 or on, you're on this half, I can say that this is definitely an articulation point. So that's why greater than and equal to sign. So 10 is one of my articulation points. Now let's get back to 8. Now the DFS for 10 is over. So what do you do is you come back to 8, right? And do you update its lowest possible insertion time? That's my simple question. And the answer to that will be no. You do not update the lowest possible insertion time. But can I say that this 8 is an articulation point? Can I say that this 8 is an articulation point? Yes, I can definitely say that this 8 is an articulation point. Why? Because the time of insertion of 8 is 8. And this is the adjacent node for which the lowest time is 9. So I can definitely say you can never reach before 8. That's why this 8 is an articulation point. So I can say 8 is one of my articulation points. Now I'll move towards another adjacent node to 9. So the time of insertion for 9 will be 12. Now the lowest will also be 12. Now it, now at 9, it looks for its adjacent and it finds to be 6. So 9 now updates its lowest time to be 6. Now will this node 9 be a articulation point? Obviously never because you know the time of insertion will always be greater than this because this is already visited so this can never be an articulation point so the dfs for 9 is completed now now once the dfs of 9 is complete you come back to 8 and what you do at first step is update its lowest to 6 because the lowest is 6 so you take it and update it now you check if this 8 can be an articulation point so what you do is time of insertion is 8 and now the adjacent node is 9 for whose the lowest time is 6. So what I see is 8 cannot be the articulation point for when you consider 9 because it cannot be. But it was an articulation point for this 10. So I can definitely say that 8 was an articulation point but over here we did not find it because for this portion it was. Right now the next point so over here we can see that 8 is not an articulation point again makes sense because if you remove 8 9 7 6 are still connected but if you remove this guy then these and these guys do get disconnected so while comparing 8 and 10 you found out 8 was an articulation point 
But while comparing 8 and 9, you did not find 8 as an articulation point. It's fine. If you find once 8 to be the articulation point, you can simply take it. Next, you come back to 7. First state, you mark it as low as 6. And now you ask, is 7 the articulation point? So for that, time of insertion is what? The time of insertion is definitely 7. And what is its adjacent node? 8. What's the lowest time of 8? 6. So definitely this 7 is not a articulation point. So now the DFS of 7 is over. We come back to 6. And when you come back to 6, it still stays a 6. And the time of insertion of 6 is 6. And what is its adjacent? That is 7. For whose low value is 6? Again, I can see it's greater than or equal to. What does that mean? The 7 can come back to 6. The 7 can come back to 6, but it cannot go before 6. That means if you remove the 6, it cannot go to this half. It cannot go to this half. So I can definitely say the articulation point. So I can definitely say that 6 is one of the articulation point because it was greater than or equal to. You can come back to 6, but not before 6. So it's an articulation point. Perfect. Now you go back to 5. Will you update the lowest of 5? No. Now for 5, again, time of insertion, 5. Lowest of 6, 6. Again, you can see that this 5 is definitely an articulation point. So simply update it. Next, you go back to 4. Now for 4, the time of insertion is 4. And the lowest, that is of 5, is 5. Now again, I can say this 5 cannot reach this portion of 4. So the node 4 is definitely an articulation point. Perfect. Next, this 4 looks around because the 4 went for DFS of 5. The DFS of 1 was still left. So it looks around at 1. And it says that let's take it slow. So it takes it slow. Can 4 be an articulation point again? Obviously, no. Why? Because 1 has already been visited. So if you're coming across, it's already visited. So this guy cannot be. Now 4 goes, now the DFS of 4 is completed, it goes back to 3. What 3 does is, it updates its lowest at first, right? Now we compare, can 3 be the articulation point? So the time of insertion of 3 is 3, and the low of IT is 1. So 3 cannot be, right? Now it's time to go back. Now we go back to 2. At first, update low. So we take the low and we update it. Now we check, can 2 be the articulation point? So the time of insertion is... 2 and the lowest time yes the lowest time of this 3 is 1 so again I can see 2 will never be the articulation point now is the moment you need to understand now whenever you have a 1 whenever you have a 1 so you go back to 1 because the DFS is of 2 is complete time of insertion of this 1 is 1 and the lower time of this adjacent is also 1 but will you call this one as an articulation point think yourself definitely not because you do not have anything on the this portion. Even if you remove one, these guys will be a single graph. You don't have anything on the upper half, which will be separated. That's why it's very important. When you're checking for greater than or equal to, the parent should be not equal to minus one. There should be something on the upper half. So that when you remove this, this portion, so that when you remove this, this portion and this portion gets separated into two different graphical components that's why it's very important you check for parent not equal to minus one and there's another condition you need to check when can the starting parent be your articulation point for that you have to write a condition what is that condition think yourself for an example if i have something like one right then i have a two then i have a three then i have a four just uh, this is the case right just just think of this case Just think of this case. Now, can I say that one is the articulation point? Yes, I can say. So there will be another condition. Why is one articulation point? Because it has three different childs. Understand, it has three individual childs. Two is nowhere connected to three. Three is nowhere connected to four. So I can say this one has three individual childs. So there will be one more case check. If at the end, I can see that the individual child is greater than 1 
and and the parent is not equal to minus one that's the last that is the case for the starting point in that case i can say this one is my articulation point now why not over here because for this one there was two there was three but there was a four so i cannot say for i cannot say for this one four and two were individual childs understand this because once you visit two you're also going to visit four so even if you remove this one two and four are connected but over here once you remove one two three four are not connected they're individual components they're individual child so they will be separated so it's very important you compute the individual childs and if that's greater than one and if it's the starting guy you can say that this is definitely my articulation point so there are a couple of conditions you need to check one is this definitely that you are going to check and the another one is right before the end of the dfs you check if it's the first guy and if it has multiple individual childs it's very important individual childs not i cannot say two and four are two individual childs two three four are individual childs because a uh, separate DFS call will be made for two, a separate DFS will be made for three, a separate DFS will be made for four. But over here, once you make the DFS for two, it will make sure two visits three, three visits four, four visits five. So a DFS of two will make sure four is visited. But over here, a DFS of two will not make sure three and four are visited. So it's very important you make sure this is individual child, not child. It's individual child which should be greater than one. So these are the two conditions which you need to take care. I will be showing you how to implement this in code uh, in the next part of the video. But before this, let's discuss the time complexity. So what will be the time complexity? So definitely the time complexity will be big of n plus e because we are uh, implementing a DFS function. The space complexity will be big of n overall. Uh, this is big of n for this, big of n for this, and then big of n for the DFS auxiliary space. So I can just write it down as b go of n so that will be the time complexity and space complexity in order to find articulation point now there's one more thing you need to take care uh, these articulation points might repeat like you might get eight twice why because see over here eight was compared with ten this condition was compared eight will again be compared with nine so it might happen eight comes up to be twice so it's better that you have a hash array in order to mark which are the articulation points because articulation points might repeat because see eight can be with nine right this can be an articulation point when it is compared with nine this can be an articulation point if compared with 10 for an example if there was something like 13 14 15 then i could have said uh, that eight is again an articulation point so eight might come up to be an articulation point multiple times so it's better you maintain a hash array to mark which are your articulation point rather than printing it because if you print it, it might get printed multiple times, right? Because you're going to compare it with 13, 8 with 10 and so on. So that will be the logic for articulation point. Now let's discuss the C++ as well as the Java code. So let's check out the Java code. Now, as you always know that I take a dummy n and I assign a dummy adjacency graph. So this is what I've done. And after that, I've called the function print articulation. So this is the function which is, which is going to print the articulation points. So I take the adjacency list, which is containing the graph. I take n, which is the number of nodes. I take three different arrays. One array you, everyone knows, it's the visited array, which will be used for DFS. The another array, you know, is time of insertion, while the another array is uh, the lowest time of insertion. So what I do is, I also make sure I keep a hash, which marks which nodes are articulation point. I told you the reason for doing so in the last part of the explanation so i just take this right after this what i do is i know how to call dfs dfs is generally called like this right you iterate for all the n nodes and whichever in whichever is unvisited you call the dfs so as we know that we will be requiring the node as well as the parent so initially i've kept the timer as zero so whenever we start the first dfs what we do we mark it as visit visited that's the first step of dfs after that, I mark the time of insertion and the lowest time of insertion as timer plus plus. Whenever it gets into the DFS, the time of insertion and the lowest time of insertion is marked. Right after this, I count individual children for the last case that I talked about. Now what I do is, if it is equivalent to parent, uh, there is no need to do anything, you continue. But there will be other cases. 
if the adjacent node is unvisited you know if it is unvisited what you need to do you will just call a dfs he'll call a dfs and what is the next step that you'll do you will have the lowest minimum insertion time so you compare it with the adjacent lowest minimal insertion and if that is smaller than lowest of node you just replace it so this takes the lowest minimal insertion from the adjacent once this is done you just implement because the dfs for it is over now you have the condition implemented and if this condition satisfied you say that the node is an articulation point so you mark it as one and you also say child plus plus now this is for counting individual childs now the last example as i said if there are dfs calls for multiple children so you will call it as child plus plus to count individual childs now what if it is visited what if the node is visited you know if the node is visited the time of insertion will definitely be smaller than lower of node the time of insertion will be definitely be smaller than low of node so i just take the time of insertion of that visited guy and i compare it with low of node and i replace it so that is what i am going to do now once i have done this once i have done this the dfs call for all adjacent nodes are completed now just in case if it is the first guy just in case if it is the first guy and if it has more than one individual children i simply say that this guy is an articulation point for the last example that i discussed so this will be the entire dfs call that will be done so this keeps on going for all the components and for every component you will get all your articulation point so this will be the java code that generates all the articulation point so at the end you can simply iterate and check whichever is marked as one you can print those articulation points so this will be the simple java code so now let's talk about the c++ code now this is the normal stuff that i do i take the graph as input and right after that what we do is uh, we assign the time of insertion as minus 1 the lowest possible time of insertion as minus 1 and the visited array as minus 1 and the visited array as 0 everything can be 0 minus 1 whatever you want doesn't matter right after that i have a hash for is articulation i told you in the last explain last part of the explanation that you need to carry a hash you, you cannot print it directly because there might be multiple times when you get a node as an articulation point so you need to carry an hash to mark if it's an articulation point or not now you need to call the dfs and you know in order to call the dfs for graphs you have to run a for loop that's very obvious you have to run a for loop so if it's unvisited if for a given component it's unvisited you call the dfs with i and the parent being minus 1 and you also initially assign the timer to be zero now how will the dfs look like now the dfs will take the node parent and all the other required parameters right so what we will do is we will at first make sure that the current node is marked as visited this is a simple thing that we do in dfs now what is the other thing if you remember when we were traversing we always made sure that the first thing was time of insertion and lowest of lowest time of insertion was marked so i mark it next i'll keep a variable child equal to 0 just in case to count the individual children and this will only be used for the first time if you remember the last part of the explanation i told you we need to compute the number of individual children if it is the starting point so what i do is i traverse for all its adjacent nodes now if the adjacent node it's a, is a parent or there is no need to do anything and you continue but if the adjacent node is unvisited if by chance the adjacent node is unvisited so what we do is we call the dfs yes we call the dfs and it is called for it and node basically i go to the adjacent node with node being the parent and i pass on the timer and everything but when we come back so we say that dfs call for it is over so i update the loop and by what value do i update it's very simple if the current value is smaller is greater than lower of i it i just take the adjacent lowest time and update it now after that i check for the condition that we have already explained and if it is i don't print the node because uh, it might happen you get a node multiple times so i mark it as is articulation point node equal to 1 i'm not printing it multiple times i'm just marking it now what if the node is already visited it's an already visited node so what i know is if it's already visited it 
is definitely on the other side so i just it cannot be the articulation point so i just borrow the minimal time of insertion i borrow it and compare it and i update it if it is smaller simple once the dfs for all the adjacent nodes have been traversed i know if it's the first node if it's the first node the last example that i talked and the individual children are greater than one and how do you find ind individual children very simple you do a child plus plus why because if a dfs is called for its adjacent node so those are definitely individual children you remember the last example right those are definitely your individual children so you do a child plus plus so if it's the starting node and there are greater than one individual children i can say that guy can be an articulation point so i mark it as one and i say that this guy is definitely one of my articulation points so once the dfs for everyone is complete i iterate from 0 to n yes i iterate from 0 to n and what i do is i simply compare if that is equivalent to 1 and if that is i print that i yes i print that i and that will print all my articulation point so guys this will be the simple c++ code i hope you have understood the explanation as well as the code so just in case you did please 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 make sure you like this video and if you are new to our channel please 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 do consider subscribing to us and with this i'll be wrapping up this video let's meet in the next video where i'll be discussing the next concept